Everybody. Today we're doing rainbow bread, starting off with a large bowl and one cup of milk. Then add to that one egg yolk, and that's from a large egg. And then simply blend those two things together until well combined. Take the entire bowl, put it in the microwave, and heat it on high for about 45 to 50 seconds until it's warm to the touch. Then add two and a half tablespoons of white granulated sugar, that's just regular sugar, and one envelope of quick rise instant yeast, that's two and a quarter teaspoons. And then one and a half tablespoons of melted butter. Just whisk those things together until well combined and then set it aside. The dry ingredients are three cups of all-purpose flour and three quarters of a tablespoon of salt. And blend those two together and you may not use all of this flour, you're going to use approximately three cups. Start off by putting about a cup at a time into the bowl. And at the beginning, put the first cup. And using a whisk, blend this in until you get a nice smooth paste. And then continue adding the flour a little at a time. You may have to switch to a wooden spoon. And when the dough starts to come together in the center of the bowl, and starts to pull away from the sides, it's time to turn it out onto the countertop and knead it. So put more flour on the countertop to keep it from sticking and then begin to knead the dough and you're going to knead it for about five minutes until the dough is not too sticky and it is smooth and elastic. I think I used approximately two and three quarter cups of the flour in total after everything was done. Then take the dough ball and just kind of make it into an oblong shape and then you're going to divide it into six equal pieces. So I started off by dividing it into thirds and then cutting the thirds into half to get six pieces. Roughly equal size, I wouldn't obsess too much over that fact as long as they're approximately equal. And now we're going to knead in the food coloring to make the different colors of the rainbow. I'm using paste food coloring. You could use liquid food coloring as well by just poking a little hole in the dough ball, putting a few drops of the liquid food coloring in and then starting to knead it. You may have to add more flour to the countertop to keep the dough balls from sticking as you're kneading the dough. And you're going to knead the food color into the dough until you get a uniform bright color to the dough. Some of it might come off onto your hands and onto the countertop as well. Keep adding a little, little bits of flour at a time until um, the color is nicely kneaded in. Of course, I kind of cut the, the most of the kneading out there. It didn't happen quite that quickly. Spray a bowl with a little bit of cooking spray or put a little bit of oil in it. A tiny bit of oil or cooking spray on the top of the ball. And then cover it with some plastic wrap. And the cooking spray will just keep the dough from sticking to everything. And you're going to place this in a warm spot to rise until it is doubled in size. And that takes about an hour and a half or so, depending on the temperature and the kind of yeast you're using. And I'm just going to show you the kneading of another piece. It takes about five or six minutes to knead the color in for each of the dough balls. So this is a, a time-consuming recipe. This is the orange. And if you keep adding flour on your little tiny bits of flour on your countertop, um, most of the color will come go back into the dough ball and your countertop will be fine. Once the dough has a chance to rise until it is doubled, then you're going to assemble the loaf. Starting off with the purple, and just roll it out until you get like a rough rectangle shape that's about the size of the bread pan that you're using. And then brush the top of the surface of the dough with a little bit of water using a pastry brush. The water is going to help keep all those layers stuck together so that you don't get giant air pockets in between the layers of dough. And then just continue to stack the layers by putting a little bit of water in between each of the layers and try to press out any air bubbles that you can find that are between the layers. I didn't use all the colors of the rainbow. I only used six of them. I left out the indigo in this particular one.
as you go, firmly press the layers together because you want to try to get as much of the air out that's between the layers as possible, and that way you'll have a nice uniform loaf without big holes in it at the end. And finally, the red at the top. You can, of course, invert this if you'd like. You don't have to have the red on the top. And then you're going to take all those layers that have been stuck together and put them into a greased loaf pan. You could also put this on a cookie sheet as well if you don't have a bread pan. And then I spray some plastic wrap with some cooking spray and then just drape it over loosely on top of the bread pan and then put it in a warm place to rise until double. That takes about an hour or so depending on the temperature. And when it's just about doubled, then it's time to bake it. You're going to bake it for a half an hour at 375 degrees until it's golden brown on the top and when you tap the loaf with your finger it has a very hollow sound. Now as soon as it comes out of the oven um, this part is optional you can brush on a little bit of butter on the surface of the loaf and what this does is it creates a nice soft crust on the top. If you want crusty bread then don't do this part. And once it's cooled a little bit you can take it out of the bread pan and let it cool completely on a wire rack before you slice it. And here we go, the first slice of the rainbow bread. And you can see it turned out very well. All the layers have stuck together. And there were very few actually big pockets of air in this. Um, it turned out quite well. The bread itself is a very nice white bread basically. Um, you don't taste the colors. If you close your eyes and eat this, it tastes just like regular bread, but it certainly is a lot of fun to look at. And uh, you can imagine making toast with this, French toast with this, or even peanut butter and jelly sandwiches would be taken to a whole other level with this special bread. Give it a try.